Coming up next, Frank and Mary here in Framingham with uh, your co-host, Grace O'Donnell and me, Art Bergeron. Uh, today, we're joined by uh, Mary Brooks, who is the, the uh, director of the Ombudsman Program at uh, Bay Path Elder Services. She's going to be joined by uh, Marie Gibbons, who is a volunteer nurse who's going to talk to you about what she does and why she likes doing it. Uh, stay tuned. Welcome to this episode of Frank and Mary in Framingham. I'm Grace O'Donnell, Director of Elder Services. And I'm Art Bergeron, a friend of Grace O'Donnell's. Uh, my day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell, where I do nothing but elder law. Uh, but this show is really not about my day job. This is really about Frank and Mary. Frank and Mary's goal in life uh, is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if you can identify with that, then this is the show for you. The point of this show is to let you know who the people are and what the programs are that you need to know about. If you want to do exactly that, just stay right here in Framingham until you die. Uh, we have some great co some great guests today. Grace, whom do we have today? Hi, Arthur. Our guest today is Mary Brooks, Program Director of the Long-Term Care Ombudsman Program at Bay Path Elder Services. And joining her is Marie Gibbons, a nurse who is a volunteer with the Ombudsman Program with Bay Path. We, we you hope so you'll much. enjoy the show. Thank you so much for having us. Um, I love talking about this program. It's an awesome program. Um, and as Arthur said, people want to stay in their homes, but unfortunately, sometimes, you know, a nursing home is necessary. And that's when the ombudsman program comes in. So I'm looking forward to answering questions and sharing information about that. So I, Mary, I know that some people have heard that word ombudsman, but they don't necessarily know what it means. And some people are hesitant to say, I don't know what the meaning of that exactly. word is. <laughs> so can you even tell us what does an ombudsman encompass? What does an yeah, ombudsman we, we should, do? We should have a little thing with the words spelled out so that people <laughs> actually see the, see the word. Absolutely. So first, ombudsman is a Swedish term, and it means one who investigates citizens' complaints. Specifically, the long-term care ombudsman program, we visit nursing home residents, and we're there to advocate for them. Right. We're there to be their extra set of eyes and ears to help respond to any concerns they have during their stay in the nursing home. That's great, because I know... I have visited people in long-term care facilities for years, and often if they have a concern about something, they'll say, oh, but don't tell anybody because I don't want any repercussions. So how do you handle that part of it? Very gently, um, because I totally understand and respect that they fear retaliation. They don't want to be, you know, complaining you know, they appreciate what staff does for them, so they don't want to complain about the staff. If it's specific to them, I do encourage them to allow me to help. Um, talking to the staff at the facility, uh, speaking to the director of nurses or the administrator or the activity director or the dietitian, whomever. But sometimes these things can be resolved without using their name, which they like. Uh -huh. You know, I will talk with others and get a sense of how others are feeling about whatever's troubling that particular resident. And I can address it as a general facility. I do let the resident know I'm doing that though. Yeah. Okay. Because I want them to know what I'm up to and I don't want their concern to suddenly get better and have them question after not giving me permission. I want that their trust. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I imagine confidentiality is a big part of that role. Absolutely. You know, we're resident driven, following their direction, letting them know what we're doing along the way. Let them know, you know, what steps we're taking and asking them, 
you know, what would they like us to do about it? Getting them involved in how they want to work on concerns that they have. Yeah. And does the ombuds person also make their own observations? So if they see, gee, I noticed, you know, there was a, a wet spot on the floor and there was no uh, sign there advising people to steer clear of it. Is the ombudsman able to bring a concern like that oh, to the administration? Absolutely. Observation is a huge part of this because that's what we're doing while we're walking through the building. You know, we're looking at everything. We're paying attention to what the interactions between the residents and staff are. You know, are they good? Are they are the residents clean? Marie, you can add to this if you'd like. Um, sure. I, I will go on forever because I love talking about this. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> you really like it. But yeah, it is true. Once you go in, you can look around. You'll look down the halls. You'll look in the rooms. You'll see whether there's a lot of clutter there or if they're nice, clear hallways for them, for the residents to go back and forth in their wheelchairs, maybe to go down to an activity or sit with a family who comes to visit or something like that. But we always are looking around to see if, see if it's all neat and clean or if there's something we can do about it. You know, the other thing, sorry, no problem. there are a lot of residents that can't speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't have the wherewithal. They may have dementia. They can't express to us what their concerns are. And so, you know, obs observing, you know, what they look like, their setting, is it comfortable, is it clean? You know, are they disheveled or are they, you know, well, look well cared for? Someone once told me, Marie, I bet you'd, you'd agree with this one, <laughs> the fingernails, hmm? you know, just something as simple as, are their fingernails clean? Yes, yeah. uh, do they have their dentures in? <laughs> Right. And yeah. little things like that. It may sound silly, but it's little things like that or their hair is combed and, you know, mm -hmm. that they look nice. That, you know, I was going to say, and that's not that's not silly at all. That's the, for, for so many people who are obviously no one is in a nursing home because that was their goal in life, you know, no. was to get to a nursing home. Nobody's there because they're they're happy to be there typically. But but the goal of life, when, when you know, when you're at that point in your life is just to be as good as you can be, given where you are, given the state of your health and given your awareness and stuff. And so and, and, and to, to have dignity, to have dignity, even if you're sick. And so to be doing that is just wonderful. Grace, can I just I'm just going to ask a, a question. I know you were talking about responding to complaints and observing what can you just talk about your relationship with the kind of the family members, right? You know, are, are you allowed to talk to the family members? Can the family members talk to you directly? Can they only talk to you if they have someone's healthcare proxy or someone's power of attorney? Can you, and can you just talk about that and how you, and how you also deal with what I would assume would occasionally even be conflicts among family members, you know, regarding how my or dad is being cared for. And now you're kind of the 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 kind of unwitting person That's on the definitely right? a challenge without a Talk doubt. <laughs> um, and I think you did yes. Uh, so ultimately, we're resident driven. So when a call comes in from a family or a relative or a friend, ultimately we want to go see the resident. We want to start there. And if the resident can't speak with us or there is a guardian involved or a healthcare proxy that's activated, then yes, certainly we listen to that. We listen to families regardless, but again, ultimately we go to the resident. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, examples are fun. So I had a daughter who was very upset with mom's room change. Um, and I went and I saw mom and mom was perfectly fine and happy. She was a social butterfly who was never in her room anyway. And so she didn't have an issue with the room change. Um, that's the short version. But, you know, again, um, absolutely families. Oh, my gosh, the dynamics. Um, sometimes I get calls from um, facility staff. You know, they're having issues with residents who have family members that are at conflict. 
And so, you know, I can offer to be part of a meeting to make sure everybody's just hearing each other. I'm not going to solve that conflict. I, no way, but might be able to at least get to the meat of the problem and work on what's in the best interest of the resident. So could I ask Mary, <clears throat> excuse me, is there a distinction between your role as the ombudsman program director and Marie's role or other ombudsman? Um, is it that you would step in when there is a conflict that hasn't been able to be resolved or are there certain circumstances that the ombudsman will always defer up to you? So when I get calls, I will call upon the volunteer to make that initial visit. They're quite capable. They go through a very intense certification training that's right now being done virtually. Uh, so it's a, instead of a relatively three days, it's more like five weeks, a couple hours a week. Anyway, I'm getting into details. I probably don't need to. Um, anyway. Uh, yes, absolutely. They are certified. They're capable. They can call upon me to help them. I have meetings with the volunteers and we discuss issues together as a group and help each other. Okay. So yeah, no, they, I'll, I'll get involved when needed. The volunteers are very capable. Okay. Marie, and Marie. Uh, oops, oh. yeah. I'm sorry. Marie, can you tell yes. me a bit about your direct experience as an ombudsman volunteer? Is this something you do on a weekly basis, a daily basis? How off, How much is your commitment to this program? I usually go once a week to see, to see the residents. And I will check in and go and say hello to everybody and um, you know, observe what they're doing and what they're not doing. And then check on, uh, the. I go room to room and whoever's awake and would like to speak to me, I go in and say hello. And maybe a person I've, I've visited every week and he or she will tell me the same story every week. <laughs> and I just laugh every time they tell the story because it's usually a funny one or something that they always wanted to do or there may be a sports related thing. But um, I'll listen to them and they, it's, it, it brightens their day a little bit, even if it's just that. And mm -hmm. while you're listening, and while you're listening to them, she's observing, you know, yeah. and, and that resident sees that Maria is dedicated and in there every week. So if she does have a problem, she'll feel comfortable to speak with you about that problem. I'm sure, Marie. Yeah. Oh, right. But no, Marie's wonderful. She's been going uh, weekly forever. And she actually just got on another facility for me yep. because I am struggling a little bit with staff. Um, I've lost a few during the COVID pandemic. Um, I have a couple who are on a leave of absence and not quite ready to start going back in yet. So um, yeah, and I that will was add, Marie, I'm sorry. <laughs> Marie has uh, just hit her five-year mark. Wow, so congratulations. Five years, exactly. Thank you, Thank you all. Wow. I didn't even realize it. it's been such a great time to do it. Well, well. Been well, you know, it's been well, and it's been a learning experience for me. Mm -hmm. And being able to shut off that nurse part of me when needed to, so that I don't over overdo, over, overdo, over, go over the boundaries of what I'm supposed to do. You don't want to overstep. Yeah, that's right. No. Thank you. Thank you. I couldn't remember it, the word. It's but, the but nurse you are still helpful. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was just gonna say, you are still doing the nurse part of you as far as caring for people, Marie. You, you can't turn that off. <laughs> That's I don't possible. think that'll ever be turned off, you're right. <laughs> right. right. Right, you can and, never turn that off. And do you typically do just one long-term care facility or do you do more than one? I do two now. Oh, wow. And my right. other fellow ombudsmen also have done two. I started out with one, then as Mary said, a lot of people, you know, didn't feel comfortable coming back or were, were enough at the health issues, whatever it was. And so now I'm doing two. So I go over to the second one too. And um, you know, they're all delightful. They like they haven't they haven't gotten to know me yet, but they will. Yeah. And uh, a few of them have felt comfortable talking with me. You know, we just talk, just ask them what they're doing and all that stuff. And usually they're off to an activity, so I don't want to keep them too long. Yeah. And would you say you spend an hour or two hours at a facility? Usually about an hour. Okay. And if something's going on, then it's longer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Might be a little bit longer if I can, you know, help resolve it. And if I can't, I, you know, say, well, do you mind if I talk to the staff? Do you mind if I talk to my director? Mm -hmm. And I always ask them, what the, what do they want me to do? Yeah. If there's an so, issue. So if, if, pers if someone were interested, in, I guess I had two, two, two questions that are kind of related. If, if someone were interested in doing this, but were saying to themselves, oh, I don't know, this looks, this could be pretty intimidating. It, could, could they like come in and like shadow? Did you, could you like shadow someone for a day or whatever, just to kind of watch what they do? And then kind of the related question is, once you're in, um, is, there, do, do, is there some kind of ongoing um, like meeting among the people who are doing this kind of volunteer work? Because I, I would, this, it sounds like, I, I, so, as I so often when I'm talking to clients and stuff, I say, you know, the thing about dealing with folks especially who've got, you know, memory issues. It's like, this isn't rocket science, but it is totally about experience, you know, and about sharing experiences, you know, oh, you know, I had, we had this, I had this issue and I dealt with it this way and things were terrible and it was just, we just went south, any ideas. And then people will kind of throw out ideas, you know? So I was just wondering, so kind of <clears throat> first, is there kind of a way to kind of just check this out? And then once you're in, is there, what are the supports for you if you're really having a meltdown? Because maybe one of your people had a meltdown and you're like, oh, I, I, I can't do this. Right? I hope I hope that's where I come in. Um, I hope that my volunteers would call me and, and, and honestly, and I call my colleagues, you know, I'm not I'm not, you know, uh, super woman here. I, I have my issues and I second guess myself and. You know, I'll call upon my colleagues as well. And ultimately, Marie as the volunteer and myself will call upon the state when we need to as well. Um, so first, the answer to your first question, because I got ahead of myself again. Um, so there is some shadowing that can happen. Um, if someone calls me and shows an interest, I definitely want to have a good conversation with that person, let them know what they're getting into before they take the certification training because it's time consuming. Um, it's, it's roughly three days of training. Um, and then on top of that, I do visits at the facility in the field with people before I just let them go. So getting on board is challenging because it's time consuming and the certification training is very intense. But once people are done with that piece of it, the flexibility is awesome. Uh, Marie, Marie can tell you, you know, basically, you know, they can go in seven days a week, as early as 10 in the morning, maybe supper time, which isn't ideal, but in, actually I encourage different days and different times so they get a real good feel and sense of what the facility is like. And then as far as ongoing support, yes, definitely I want my folks to call me anytime they need to talk something out, but we do meet monthly. So every month I meet with the volunteers and we discuss issues and help put our heads together to figure out what we can do to make situations better. And then sometimes I'll have speakers come in on related topics as well. So it, it depends on what the need is and what's available out there, um, but ongoing support. Definitely. I think that's why I have folks who uh, they've been with me. I have two that have been with me for over 10 years. I have uh -huh. a couple that are five plus years. Um, including Marie. <laughs> including Marie. That's <laughs> right. So, Can I ask another question, Mary? Um, do you have many ombuds people who speak other languages? Because I imagine as our population is aging, more people now are entering long-term care facilities who don't speak English as their native language or because yeah. of memory issues might be reverting back to that is what was their native language, even if they did question. learn English. So do you and have many ombudsmen who speak other languages? I, I don't. And, and so, that is, so this is a, yes. a, a, a great idea for people who have bilingual abilities in you know, Thank whether you it's yes. any of the various Chinese dialects, Spanish, Portuguese, Haitian Creole, Russian. Uh, I know Framingham has something mm -hmm. like 120 different languages. So 
for somebody who has that ability, I bet this would be something they would find, could find very rewarding in terms of maybe being one of the few people who can connect with some of these. Can residents. set them when we need, you know, like, so most of the volunteers, once they do the training, I assign them to a facility. Some mm-hmm. might do a couple. And I've been trying to think outside the box because prior to the pandemic, I had a really good solid group and I'm like, okay, if I get more people, what am I going to do with them? You know, am I going to have one that does recruitment? Am I going to have one that can go into the nursing facilities and maybe do some talks with staff about resident rights, about what, what our purpose is, why we're in there. You know, I don't want to intimidate staff. I want to work with staff and I want them to get that because it's a team effort. So this could be perfect. Someone out there who's bilingual, who's interested in joining this program, they could be my go-to person to go to facilities when the need is out there, which I'm sure there's a greater need than we're all even aware of. Mm-hmm. I leave my car about behind. Because <laughs> right, you wouldn't hear about it now because folks would kind of be intimidated to even try to get involved because mm-hmm. of the language issue. That's really Grace, that's a really great point. That's a great point. Are there Thank any you. other details about this role, either you, Marie, as somebody who was doing it in person, or you, Mary, um, that that you think would be important for people to know um, or maybe encourage them to uh, look into this as a volunteer opportunity for them? Is there anything else that you have left out of the mix? Then Marie, I have a question want- too. <laughs> um, I, I will go and then Marie, add your two cents, please. So again, empathy is huge. Um, being able to be a really good listener. Um, I think if nothing else, it doesn't matter what field you're in. You know, I have nurses, Marie. I have um, teachers, homemakers, engineers. I've had so many people from different walks of life that all bring something to the table, but listening and empathy are huge. Marie, what do you think? Anything else? Yeah, I can- agree with you. you know, it, just listening to them is a big, is a big deal, you know, because you're know, somebody who will stand there and listen to what they have to say and say, oh, isn't that this, that, and the other thing. And um, is there something I can help is, can I help you with this? Mm-hmm. And then they say, well, just maybe just talking to you is fine. But or do you want me to go to the staff and say, you know, could we do something about it? Even if it's something just like a cold breakfast or something meaning, like that. Meaning like rather than yeah. having a hot breakfast, they might prefer yeah. having cereal. Yeah, cold cereal or something or, you know, something, just little things. And, but it's, it's a big thing to them. Yeah. The little things matter. Yeah, Definitely. And I was and just going to ask, oh, I'm sorry, Grace. I, I, I was curious, do the long-term care facilities view you as um, an adversary trying to find the problems, or do they see that this is really a relationship that you have with their residents to help them provide the best care? Which, which is the scenario that plays out? I think we're more of a relationship because we help them. I've at one facility that I went to, somebody, I think it was the, if I remember correctly, it was like the case manager or something, came up to me and said, would you talk to so-and-so, this huh. person down there? You know, he or she is lonely or something, or they had a lot of mm-hmm. issues. They were sort of, you know, not really participating. Could you help us? So so that facility saw that you could assist them because they're yeah. mostly focused on, on the medical issues and right. the personal care and their staff is stretched so thin. So, wow, terrific that they yeah. know I, you are somebody that can connect with their residents I and love help that. them provide and, better care. And, you know, actually I have, you know, said to my volunteers, you know, staff do appreciate us because they do, not all, they don't all get us, but go to staff and ask them, you know, is there anyone who you think would benefit from a visit? Mm. Is there anyone who you see doesn't get visitors who really could benefit from just being seen. And and they do, they will tell us that's the ideal, you know, no place is perfect. And that's why we're in there. Yep. 
Yeah. And, and the real thing is anytime there's an issue, the best thing is to put it out in the open. That's the one thing that makes it possible to resolve an issue. If things stay locked up and not addressed, then you're not giving anybody an opportunity to maybe improve it. But once it, it gets put out there, then the, the wheels start turning on the possibility that it could be, be made better. Oh, absolutely. Yes. And I just had a question kind of on the other side of that. You know, if you do you have in 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 cases where you're just finding that you're kind of you, you think that there is a legitimate problem and things aren't getting addressed. Right. I mean, I would assume that both the Department of Elder Affairs and the folks at Mass Health who pay a lot of the bills for a lot of these people are very interested in these issues. Right. If they yes. don't think that things are being addressed. So. Do, do you find yourself on occasion? How do you deal with getting the, to that point if you don't think the problem is getting solved? Oh, if we're if we're not able to resolve an issue or if it's abuse, neglect, mistreatment of any kind, we are going to make sure the Department of Public Health is aware of that. We share that information to the residents, to family members, you know, that they can also reach out to the Department of Public Health and the Department of Public Health is in on complaints, they're in on annual surveys, recertifying homes. They do connect with us because we are in there more regularly. So we can tell them the good that we're seeing and we can tell them the areas that they might wanna be looking at. Right, and so families should be aware of that, that you know, making mm -hmm. those complaints is important, right? And being involved is important because these entities are regularly recertified or not by the yes. Department of Public Health. And so these can, these places have a real interest in making sure that those who finance them and regulate them feel they're doing a good job. So so you're really, you're, you know, you're, your complaints are not going to get lost someplace. This is really important, especially if the ombudsman's with you, right? Because that's a third party, yep. right? And so it's, that's great. That's great. Well, listen, so my, my job as a non-Framingham person is to kind of provide comic relief and keep time. And I'm looking and I know we're kind of a little bit close on time, but I really want I, I thank you so much for doing this. This is oh. just really important. It relates to issues that I know Grace hits all the time that I hit all the time. Right. And it's just the point of this kind of show is to have people realize um, the possibility if they've got a loved one who's in a in, in, in a uh, facility, right? That so, somebody they can really help them out. So Grace, th thank you so much for doing And Grace, Grace thank, yes, Grace thank keeps you finding so much all for these having great us. people. <laughs> that, oh, thank you. That, it's we're great. delighted thank to you. have you both. We're delighted. <laughs> we're delighted. And you know, I, I know that as a result, our ratings are going to go up. So we may have you come back, right? For kind of a, another guest appearance, but thank Absolutely. you so much. And once again, Marie, congratulations. As Grace five said, years. Yeah. five years. That's, that's yeah. terrific. He's going to do at least five more. Oh yeah. <laughs> Hold her to it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Final thing. If somebody was interested in volunteering, give us a, give us a contact, like a phone number or someplace that they could volunteer. Okay. That would be call Bay path. You can call me directly. If you like Mary Brooks at five zero eight. Five seven three seven two three five. Yeah, or call Marie Gibbons and find out what a what a great time she's having. So, folks, thank you so much for watching. This is really important stuff. If you want to volunteer, um, Mary needs volunteers, right? And yes. Marie Marie would like to see more volunteers working with her. Um, and we hope you enjoyed the program. We'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Framingham. Thank you very much. Thank you.